All right, everybody, welcome to Follow Up Boss Office Hours. Super excited today to cover one of my favorite topics, which is a simple, it's a, an oldie but a goodie, stages and smart lists. So we're gonna dive in today with a focus on stages first, and then dive into how those drive and power smart lists. Uh, we're gonna give you some of our recommended stages, uh, as well as some best practices for either adding stages or figuring out stages that are really specific uh, to your company. Uh, again, how those work to power the smart list, and then how to leverage smart lists instead of tasks. I'm a big fan of uh, not having a million tasks coming at you when the time is not appropriate, but having a place where you can go to tackle the calls or emails or texts that you need to make when that time is right. So my name is Lee Adkins, welcome. I'm the head of growth at Amplified Solutions and I am joined today with Steve Neary, who is on the Follow Boss Success team. Why don't you tell us about yourself, Steve? Yeah, thanks Lee, appreciate that. So as Lee said, my name is Steve. Uh, I live in New Jersey. Been at Follow Up Boss for a little over a year and a half now. Uh, and I'm on the success team. I've worked with, with many awesome teams that are part of this Facebook group. So anyone is out there joining, hello to you. Uh, and this is one of my favorite topics too, stages and smart lists. It's, it's the foundation for so much of, of what you can do in follow-up boss. So super pumped and excited to get rolling here. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. You, you were the guy for this session. I know a lot of people focus on these things, but uh, yeah, I, I'm glad we're doing this. So before we dive in too much, we'll have you share your screen in a minute, but before we dive in, like, what is your, like, what do you say, think the stages are for, Steve? Like, how, how would you define a stage? Let's say I've never used Follow Boss before and I'm coming to you and I'm like, hey, what does a stage do in Follow Boss? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, at the simplest level, it just helps you stay organized, right? So it's a way to categorize all of your different contacts so that you can find them, so that you know who to actually be following up with. Um, yeah. It's it's so important to do it and to have those those clearly defined categories so you don't just have everything all in one massive group and you're trying to dig through and leads are getting lost in your database. So at the very simplest level, it's the easiest way to organize everybody in your actual follow-up boss. Yeah, for sure. And I, I think it's important, you know, to me, it's important to note, I think that the stage is a little more about either the time frame or the current status of the person. I think too, I see too many people that have either like a sphere stage or things that are, are not a, a willingness or readiness to transact. And to me, a stage kind of categorizes that. And if you think about the people in your database, you know, you want to be able to have, we want people to transact with us more than once, right? Like we want people to go from like, lead to hot prospect to client to past client and then do it all over again so to me a stage is where they are in that current process their source is obviously where they came from tags can be great for categorizing but a stage is really more about where they are currently in your need to communicate with them maybe yep yeah exactly why don't you share your screen and let's uh let's dive in specifically to stages now one quick caveat um you would have to, if you're a solo user, you can edit the stages. If you're a team member or a brokerage member, you may not be able to edit these stages. Only the owner account can edit stages. So we're going to tackle that first, but just be mindful if you're on a team or if you don't pay for the follow boss account, you may not be able to edit stages, but you should still stay tuned because we're going to talk about using them. Exactly. Yeah. So your account owners, when you go to admin, you're going to see stages, and this is going to bring up a list of probably what most of them look like as defaults in your accounts. The really, really important thing to remember about these is it's super important to define what these actually mean, right? So like, yeah, you've got hot prospect, you've got nurture, but, but what is a hot prospect, right? What does that mean to your team? And that mean, may, may mean something different to your team based on how you guys are, are structured and set up. But what you can do in here is if you see a little box, you can actually click and you can edit and you can customize what this means, right? So yeah, typically somebody looking to transact in the next zero to three months, we put them into hot prospect, right? 
And you can customize, like I said, any of these ones, nurture, maybe this is three plus months out. So I'd say one of the first things I always recommend doing is go in and clearly define your stages and kind of organize them in here so that you know what they mean. Anyone else on your team also knows what they mean. Yeah, I think defining those is, is definitely the key. And, and Steve, I know we talk, we've talked about this before, but you know, different people think differently, different businesses act a little different. So if your brain thinks hot prospect and the number doesn't work for you, call it hot prospect. If you want to call it a hot lead, call it a hot lead. Just be clear on what those things are. Um, just to, like Steve just said, I just want to reiterate. Be sure that if you have other people you're working with, it's just clear the definition of what that is. In my mind, a lead is somebody that you have not connected with yet. Your goal is to get them out of lead. You have not connected with them yet. And so you should keep trying to get them out of lead. And it blows my mind how many conversations, and I'm sure you too, Steve, where we talk to people and they literally are like, that's a game changing. What do you, oh my goodness, that changes mm -hmm, everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Right. Lead to me means you haven't, not that you haven't tried, but you haven't connected with them yet to determine what their stage should be. So the fact that they're in lead should still, should mean, hey, contact them to try to get them out of that stage. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's the goal. How many, you, you know, Lee, as, as well as I do, how many accounts do you go into and there's a thousand people, there's 20,000 oh, people yeah. sitting in lead. And yeah, so the, the goal is first to find like, what do these stages even mean for me or for us as a team? And then it's super important. I want you to actually have those defined. You actually move them up into the certain stages based on what actually happened with that person. So when you make contact with that lead, get them out of lead stage, right? Put them into the appropriate stage based on whatever you found out in that conversation, right? If you found out they're, they're looking to do something in the next three months, put them in hot or whatever hot means to you as a team, put them in there. If they're far down the road, they're going to buy or sell at some point, but they're not ready yet. Put them into something like a nurture or whatever you guys are going to call that. But it's just super important that you're, you're doing that. Right. And it, it takes a little bit of muscle memory and building that muscle memory and just kind of remembering, oh, that's right. I had a significant conversation with this person. Let me change the stage. Let me move them into that category so that I can then have them all organized and then be able to prioritize which of these people I actually want to be following up with, right? So, sure. yeah. And Steve, can you show real quick how, how people can potentially grab these stages if they want to be able to put them somewhere and, and define them in writing? Yeah, if you just do something like this, you can copy them, paste them into either you know Word, Excel, uh, anything you want and you can just grab them up and put in whatever the definitions mean for, for you guys and for your team. Similar to this. So this is actually follow boss help doc on stages, but again, yours may be defined differently. These are just some of the recommended ones that, that we have here. Make something like this. Again, if you're running a team, make something like this for the team. So it's super clear and super simple and they know exactly what everything means in there. Yeah, that's perfect. And Steve, can you drop that link into the chat? People are asking for the best practice stages. And I would yep. say that's it. Um, yeah, for sure. I want to talk about one more that you've got uh, in a minute. But yeah, if we could drop that link in. Yep. Yeah, just put it in there. Awesome. So I, I and to that same point, Steve, I know you and I agree on this. We've talked about it before as well. Always keep it simple to start. You know, we see all kinds of people that have 20, 30 stages, a lot. And that can be useful if you have a strategy around using all of those. But the way I always look at it is if people have to think for more than half a second of which stage to put people in, you've got too many. I mean, yep. because the problem is the whole point of this is to know who to follow up with when. And if you've got 20 different categories of who to follow up with when, then nine times out of 10, a lot of people are just not gonna follow up with anybody. <laughs> And mm -hmm. so I say start simple and add them as you have a dire need um, for more stages. The only one I'd add to your list, Steve, or maybe two. Actually, I like the three that are here that are not in that list. Being contact, do not market to, agent, vendor, and unresponsive. 
Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, and again, you, like Lee said, keep it, keep it super simple in the beginning, at least, especially. And then you can always edit this. You can always kind of tweak and change them if you, if you need, you know, if you need to add a warm or you want to call these something different, go for it. But best practice is let's keep this as simple as possible out of the box. Let's make it easy for ourselves, make it easy for our agents to know what we're doing. Um, one thing I do want to actually share too is if you're editing these and you're adding other stages, right? So let's just say I want this one as an example. Whenever you add them, they always just throw it, jump up on the top. You can reorder these too, right? So you just click this little thing, move that wherever it is. So again, keep it organized, keep it simple. You got all the tools that you need right here to do that. Awesome. Yeah, and, and I want to tackle a second part. I almost breezed past the second part of Bruce's question. Um, he asked specifically about uh, stages used with YLOPO. I would generally speaking, and Steve, you may, you may have a different opinion on this, but I would generally speaking say that I don't know that YLOPO, in my opinion, necessarily changes your stages because YLOPO, add, they'll add tags, they'll add the priority tags, and, and in their smart list specifically, a lot of those interact based on tag. Yeah. So it's not quite as stage driven. That said, um, you know, if you wanted to make a Y priority stage, you could certainly do that. Um, but I, I, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't necessarily try to match. I would get your fault boss the way you want it to. And my primary reason for this is that you're probably going to have other lead sources, even if it's just sphere. And so I would, I would try to have a global setup for all your lead sources with YLOPO being an important part of that. But I don't know that it drives your stages, in my opinion. Steve, do you have thoughts on yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, I agree with you completely. At YLOPO, you're going to find a lot of tags that are going to kind of differentiate between those priorities, the hand raisers, and things like that. But yeah, keep your stages should be your thing, right? Those should those are separate, and they're not they're not YLOPO specific. They're not you know website specific. They're they're specific to you and your business and how you run things. So yeah, I agree completely. Awesome. And then Chelsea has a great question too, while we're back on the screen, like how, how do you define responsive? Like what's unresponsive, you know, like, and her, her question says, I struggle between nurture and unresponsive. Um, yeah. What yeah. Great want? question, Chelsea. I, I would say unresponsive is someone that you literally have not gotten a response from. So lead comes in from wherever you're pulling leads in, you're calling, you're texting, you're emailing for the first, however many days, and you, for whatever reason, there's radio silence. You don't know why they're not responding, but they're not responding. Those are the ones I'd put in unresponsive. Someone that's not looking to buy now, that I would define more as a nurture, right? So there's, there's a little bit of a difference there for sure. Yeah, I think in theory, a nurture is somebody you connected with in some capacity of some reason to believe that yep. they either their submission said, hey, we're just poking around or, or something to that effect, but they gave you some piece of data. Um, and I, I, I like to be really careful with unresponsive. We're going to get to the second part of your question in a minute, which, which kind of clarifies that as well. Um, you know, I, I don't want to confuse things too much, but I also want to mention the idea that, you know, it's potential that unresponsive is, is maybe should be a pond. Maybe people come out of these and they still have to have a stage if they're in a pond, but um, you know, that, that's another potential thing. Um, but, yeah, but I would say unresponsive is, you know, basically like you have it here, Steve, it's a step above trash. Like we don't want to get rid of them, but we yeah, try. They, we call they, them shouldn't be, they shouldn't be your primary focus after however right. many days. Like, yeah, let's focus on other ones. Right. And then the next part of our question was just addition. What's the, what do you do with the person who says, I'm not looking to buy right now? Um, who want to keep on the newsletter and search, but not necessarily call them um, or otherwise reach out. So that, that's a great question. Uh, what do you think, Steve? Yeah, so they're not looking to buy right now. I mean, I think any way that you can provide value, right? So newsletter is great, but I also think that a lot can happen in somebody's life over the course of 30, 45 days, however long you're kind of thinking of that. And, you know, maybe they're not looking to buy right now, you don't want to call them every day. You don't want to call them every week, but 
hey, maybe that's someone you reach out to in 30 days, in 45 days, in something like that. Offer them some value, but also see like what happened, you know, maybe something drastic happened in their life where they were, you know, eight months to a year or two years down the road and you reach out in 30 to 45 days and, oh my gosh, Chelsea, I'm so glad you actually called me. Yeah, I do want to move or I am ready to do this. So, you know, I think, I think it's kind of, you can think of it like that. And when you have smart lists that are built to remind you when to follow up with someone based on a stage that you put them in, they're going to pop up in that smart list only when it's time to actually reach out and try to provide some value for them. Yeah, I, I definitely, I definitely agree with that. I think, you know, could be a nurturer. I mean, I've seen people use a long-term nurture where it's like, all right, well, this person and maybe long-term nurture doesn't, you know, doesn't get the newsletter. I know this is what's hard for people. They want us to just say, just do this. Yeah. But you guys all operate in different markets. Some of you are a team, some of you are a solo agent, some have an assistant, some don't. So there, there are important nuances, but, you know, to me, the short answer to that is nurture. You know, nurture should get a newsletter, maybe a quarterly action plan that's like, hey, I'm just thinking about you. Are you good? <laughs> but mm -hmm. if they're not on your smart list to, you know, to dial once a week by any stretch. So, yeah, exactly. And then Kelly has a good follow up to the unresponsive. Um, what if people are engaging as in opening up an email, but not responding? They still go into unresponsive. That's a great question. To me, I like to look at the source. I like to look at all the yeah. bits and pieces. Like if it's a Facebook lead, I might put them in unresponsive. If it's, you know, a little more intel, maybe maybe nurture. Yeah, I agree. And I think there's got to be like with these, like even as we're, we're defining these stages and, you know, saying what we recommend as far as timeline, a lot, there's a lot of your gut that goes into it too. You know what I mean? Like if you feel like that's a person that you could, you know, get, and like you said, Lee, depending on the source, depending on a whole bunch of other factors, that's a decision that you're going to have to make based on all that stuff. Right. So. Cool. So. Let's roll with these stages for now, which are essentially our recommended stages, plus a couple more. Just to touch on it super fast, the contact do not market to stage, in my opinion, wh what I usually do with a stage like that is we'll exclude it from a newsletter. So this is where you potentially put like, hey, you know, we got this person or this is somebody in my office or, or whatever, where I want them in my database because I'm going to personally email them once a quarter or something to that effect. But they just don't need to get any drips or any newsletters. And similar with agent vendor, if you're like, hey, I want to keep agents in my system, but I don't want them to get all my marketing so they can copy it, then maybe that's another stage that you want to have as a stage to easily exclude it from, from any sort of marketing. So yeah, yep, for sure. So stages driving smart list, what's that all about? Yeah. So stages, these are, they're my favorite things to build smart lists from, right? These, these can set the foundation for actually building your smart lists. Because it should so, in some sense be the urgency or the frequency in which you're reaching out, I, I think, right? That's exactly it. It's, it's part of defining these stages. It's not just, okay, like, when do I put someone in there? It's also all right, in general, how often do I want to be following up with someone that I've labeled as hot or that I've labeled as nurture or whatever it is? So you tie those two things together and then that's where you can build dynamic smart lists that are built based on what stage did you put someone in and when was the last time you followed up with them or you had any type of communication with them, right? So uh, we, these are, by the way, these are what we call smart lists up here. Essentially what they are is, is they're just saved search filters, right? So you can create your own, you can add all your own different filters. We have some that kind of come preloaded out of the box here when you, when you open up your account. Uh, the question I get often, Lee, from, from new teams is like, all right, well, I see these lists, but like, what the heck, how do I get people in here? <laughs> how do I get them out of here? Going in it? Yeah. Like what the heck does this even mean? Because they're all in lead. So, yeah. <laughs> Well, that too. <laughs> if you if you click on any one of your lists like this, so I'll start in this just this hot one. And if you go over to the far right and just click on these, it's going to show you exactly what filters were used to build this actual list, right? So basically, this hot two times a week list 
is again, going to show you if you move somebody into the hot prospect stage and it's been more than three days since you've had any contact with that person, boom, they're going to show up in this list. So essentially what these become is they become your automatic follow-up reminders for people in those specific stages, right? So hot list is going to remind you on this one twice a week to follow up on. If you've got somebody that you don't want to call twice a week or daily or something like that, put them into a different stage, say a nurture stage, and they're going to start showing up on your nurture list. If we go over here, when they're in the nurture stage and it's been more than 30 days since you've reached out to them, right? So again, kind of tie those stages to, all right, how often do I, or do I want my team following up with leads or people in these specific stages and build your lists or edit and customize your list based on that stuff. Right. And see what drives that last communication, just so people are really clear, what things can you do that will yeah. make it a communication? Yeah. Great question. So three things really is if I hop into Steve here, it's, it's an email, a one-to-one -one email. So not a, not a batch email, not a marketing email, a one-to-one -one email. A text sent through follow-up boss, so through your follow-up boss number. If you have the dialer or the follow-up boss calling, it makes it super simple. It's a game changer. So if you're on the fence about it, look into it. Ask someone at follow-up boss about the dialer. It's, it's going to help you. Um, or the third thing would be making a call. Again, you can do it right through follow-up boss if you have our dialer. Or at least logging that you had a call. Those are three things that are going to update your communication right there. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for clarifying yep. that. Yep. Because that is the other key. You have to actually give the system the information that you made the call or sent the email. Um, but again, this is a great way to keep yourself accountable or to keep a team accountable to, to making those notes and using the system to you know help, help it help you. That's exactly it. Yeah. So that, again, as we said, like updating stages is super important. By the way, you can find stages here on a, on a profile page. Updating stages is super important but it's also really important to actually log when you're communicating with those people, right? So that those smart lists will automatically update for you. So again, it makes it the, super simple. Yeah. And, yeah. And at the very least, you know, part of having a CRM is the fact that when people do, you know, reach out to you six months later and you're like, Oh shoot, who is this? But like, what's you know what's her husband's name again or like where did they were they buyers or what was their kid's name or whatever have that in the system so you go look i called this guy 10 times you know two years ago but now you know now he's coming back so even if you don't want to do it for the reasons that we're saying for a smart list or for better reporting or whatever just having the historical the 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 transaction cycle is as long as it's ever been, especially with a online lead, just having that Intel around, you know, Oh, right. He's this guy, or they were looking at that, or they're in this price range, whatever that is. Um, so yeah, making good yeah. notes helps, helps you. Yeah, for sure. So you don't have to try to remember all that stuff, especially when you have so many different leads and, and contacts and clients and stuff like that. So um, yeah. But other thing I wanted to kind of share real quick about these two, is like I said, these ones are kind of pre-built out of the box. You can customize these. You can, you can change them. You can change the layout and what you see here, right? So if for whatever reason, you don't want to see this particular stuff up here, if you click on columns, anything that's checked blue just means it's showing up up here at the top. So again, kind of customize these and make them your own. If you want to see whatever it is, I don't know, last sent email or something like that. These are all customizable. You can move this stuff around. You can kind of make these bigger, smaller. So again, make these your own, make them work for you. It's super important. And generally speaking, it does it only for your account. So you can do that. You're not necessarily messing up someone else's account, so to speak, if you have more than one person. That's Yeah. So it, so it depends. If you're owner admin, I should have, I should have prefaced with that. If you're, if you're owner admin and these are, these are shared lists, so like this is a shared list among your whole team. And let's say I wanted to just change this and say, hey, I want to be reminded every six days for this, right? If I make this change and I update this shared list 
it's going to change it for everybody. If you want to make your, your own, it doesn't change anyone else's. You can click new list and it's going to make your own. Now, if you're an agent and you're making any changes on any kind of shared lists, it'll prompt you to just save that as a new list. Yeah. Perfect. Very good. So we're, we're headed there. I want to tackle Heidi's question because she's patient, patiently waiting to have an answer. Um, she asked about Sphere. And since that, that PCSOI is coming up, I figured well, let's, let's tackle, uh, let's tackle Sphere. Yeah. So Sphere is done a couple of different ways. Some people do use stages for it and they put them in there. Uh, others I'll see you use the source as their Sphere in there. Uh, I don't know, Lee, what, what do you think? I think it's kind of case Personally, by case. I recommend as source and tag, but if somebody really wants to have it as a stage, I'm not, I'm not gonna arm wrestle anybody over, over yeah. that. Agreed. I think you just want them, you just want to have a way to differentiate somebody in your sphere that's not like actively looking yeah. versus new lead that came in from Zillow. You know, so let's see different. if I can, I'll see if I can sell it this way. They're going to come out of sphere at some point. They're going to come out of the sphere stage at some point, right? Because we're hoping they're going to transact. Yeah. Then how do you know their sphere once they become closed? So having a, a, a tag is more of an evergreen thing. A source is more of an evergreen thing so yeah. that you can at the end of the year go, oh, look, I closed five people from my sphere because they're in the closed stage, but source sphere. Um, but again, if you're just trying to get people to adopt it, or you're just trying to adopt it yourself and sphere is a stage in your brain, make it a stage. It's all good. Yeah. I'm not, not going to fight that. But to Lee's point, just make sure you have something that lives with that, meaning have them, have them in the sphere stage, but also maybe have a sphere tag or the sphere source. So when you do update that stage, something still stays with it. I like that for past client too, by the way. Yeah. A right. Adding so a past client tag. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yep. for sure. And so the quarterly, what does the quarterly mean there in the name? Yeah, so quarterly is, is follow up with them every quarter, every 90 days. So this is going to show you, if I, again, expand these, anyone in your, your sphere stage, if you have the sphere stage, or your past client stage that you have not, made contact with or had any communication with in more than 90 days. So basically we recommend that once a quarter, just reach out, stay in touch, stay top of mind. You want it so that if they ever need to buy or sell, or they've got a neighbor or a friend or a family member, they're going to you. They're not going to, you know, agent down the street because you never stayed in touch. With and that's the goal of this list. For sure. And so when they, again, like the other list, when they make that call, this can be confusing for people. When they make that call, they're going to come off this list, but we want yeah. that. We want that. Yeah. We want you to get this list ultimately to zero. And then people are going to come back around 90 days later because they haven't been called in 90 days. Exactly. Yeah. So that's, I love that. Get your list to zero. That's what I try to preach. And I try to, to share with my teams is exactly that. So when you go through this list, what we mean by getting to zero is if anyone is showing up on this list, it means that some action should be taken on your part. Either it's time to follow up with them because it's been however much time that you allotted here, or it means, you know, maybe you and Steve spoke and, and you know, you know, you and Steve are actually working together. You need to get Steve out of the, the lead stage. So whatever it is, there's an action that should be taken if somebody shows up on this list. So if I go into Steve, and either change his stage or let's say we have a phone call and I left a voicemail. I leave him in lead stage. When I go back to my leads list, he's gone. He's going to automatically reappear in here when it's been more than 12 hours since I had that phone call because of these filters that I have. He's still in lead stage. Right? So go through, work through your list, get him to zero. These hot prospects, call them, text them, email them. If they become your client, update the stage, change them to client. If something changes in their timeline and you don't need to be in front of them, you know, weekly or twice a week, and they're far down the road now, put them into a nurture, right? These, these lists are, they're super dynamic and they'll work for you as long as you kind of work them. Yeah, absolutely. Chris has a great question I want to answer now. It's not exactly tied to this, but it's very important and certainly, certainly relevant. Just asking about, you know, if you can do and or or on these filters. And it depends. The short answer is it depends on what the uh, field is. But yeah. yes, you can. 
Yeah. So if you, um, who's that, Chris? Chris, yeah. Yeah. If you click on these, like for example, if you're going to be adding tags and you look and you see any anything like this, you can see if it's includes any of these tags or all of these tags. Things like that are little nuances that you can again customize these lists for however you want to make them here. And I'm embarrassed to admit this, but I like to share this with people because I did not know this until somewhat recently. Um, you can have multiple filters with tags because I kept saying you can't exclude some and include other. How is this possible? You can have mm -hmm. another tag field that says exclude this stage. Yeah, and one exactly. that says tags include. I, I felt pretty silly for that. So not only do I like to share it, I try, I try to spread the word. So. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's so many little things in follow up boss that I'm learning every day. We're all learning every day. So yeah, no big deal at all. Um, one thing I wanted to share too, actually, with anyone, uh, just kind of like a little tip, anyone who, who's creating new lists or who's editing or doing anything like that, each one of you can change the order of these lists in your own accounts, right? So maybe whatever you're doing or whatever you're focusing on, you don't want them in this particular order, or you don't want them in the order that you found them in, in your account. If you go way over to the far right, manage lists, the way that these are showing top to bottom here, that's how they're gonna show left to right up there. So if you know upcoming birthdays is super important for me right now, I can click on this list, drag it up and boom, that's the first one I see, right? So go in and just order your lists however your eye wants to see them, whatever makes your life easier. Uh, and I'll say this too, for anyone who's, who's team leader who are making lists for your team that you want them to follow, you can't change the order of their lists. But one thing we recommend is when you're naming these lists, you click this little edit box here, you can actually number them. I recommend that you number them. It's so like, if you want them to focus on their leads first, make that number one. If you want them to go to hot next, make that number two, and then just let them know and say, hey, put your lists in number order, right? So just a, a little tip I wanted to share. Yeah, no, I, I love that. And what I typically do with that is then make them a video of, hey, go here, click on manage list, and then one, two, you know, just drag them. Yeah, um, Just drag exactly. them there. Um, one in other tip, on that, that I, I don't necessarily love, but uh, if, if you're pretty competent in your smart list, if you delete them and start over, you can put them in that order, but that's that's maybe an advanced uh, yeah. <laughs> an advanced use case. Um, but uh -huh. that brings us right to Kelly's question, which is if she has too many lists, you wanna clean up the ones that you actually use, but don't wanna get rid of the others permanently, is there a way to do that? Like an archive or some sort of, you know, off my radar type type thing. Yeah. So there's not a there's not an archive, Kelly. And I don't know if you're your team leader or agent, but uh, if you go over here to manage lists, and if these are just for you, delete any ones that you don't want. So okay. So yeah. So Kelly, you can do whatever you want basically. If you want to delete these, delete them and get rid of them. Like we said, if if you want to start over or you just want to focus on a couple, which is by the way what I recommend. Yeah. If you're, whether you're a solo agent, whether you're, you know, an agent on a team, whether you're a team lead, whatever you are, I would not recommend having like, you know, 12 to 20 lists that you're trying to have. It's just, it's too many. It's going to be too hard to focus on. Now so, to, to your point earlier though, Steve, it could be a function of naming them with a number or otherwise naming them differently. Cause as yeah. you can see here, the farther they go down the list, they just become in that little more drop down. It, that's not a super sexy solution, but at least reordering or otherwise renaming the main ones, you can leave more at the end and they'll be a little bit more off your radar, um, but there is not an archive, so. Yeah, yeah, good point. Yeah, Kelly, now that, you... said, that said, a lot of these aren't all that complicated, so it's not so much that if you deleted them, you could never, you know, figure out how to make a recently like i think the recently active is literally like website activity in the last seven days so yeah it is yeah <laughs> exactly but yeah that i love your point too is like if, if you do have so kelly if you do have like 20 lists or 30 lists or whatever it is you can still just focus on the first five or so that you have and they, the other ones just live down here and more and if you ever did need to jump into them for whatever reason they're there but they're not like front and center in your face
Awesome. Cool. Cool. Steve, do you have any other super pertinent smart stage or smart list? Uh, if you guys have questions, drop them to us in the Q&A. We're happy to, uh, to tackle those. But Steve, do you have anything else? Uh, oh, Ooh. mobile. I mean, yeah, I wanna, this is a question I get a lot when we show because a lot of what we show is just on desktop. And it's like, well, that's great. But I'm, you know, in the car or doing 15 other things. These exist on your mobile app, too. So you can access all these people when you're on the go. Here's where iPhone, here's Android. You can see the, the names and stuff. People is where you want to find this on your mobile apps, right? Also, you're going to be able to update your stages right here on mobile. So again, when you're, when you're thinking about your daily workflow and you're, you're doing things again from the car or you're sitting waiting for someone to go to a show and whatever you're doing, you could pull out your phone, you make a call, you send a text, whatever it is, you have a conversation, boom, you can update that stage right there, adjust your smart list. You can do all that kind of stuff right from on the go. So definitely want to share that. Uh, Brent, good question. Brent asked uh, what smart lists pop up on mobile. It's, it's the order you put them in like this. That's how they're going to do that. Yeah. So that again, yeah, you cannot reorder them. I don't think on mobile. So you'd have to on no, desktop, yeah. go to manage lists just under people. So you under people, manage lists, and then you just drag the order. Yeah. So you build and you create and you set up your lists and you, you manage your lists from desktop, but you can still work your lists from mobile. You can call through them, you text through them, and they'll update automatically. Steve, you want to tackle Jay's question? I don't, I don't know the answer to that. I think I know the answer to that, but I'm gonna let Can you know. I set up an auto dial list? Oh no, call no, list. good question. Yeah, call list. So, so Jay's question is, can, can you create a call list and call list through it on mobile? So you can call people from mobile, which you absolutely should be doing, uh, but you can't create a call list like you can on the desktop. That's the desktop function. And for those who don't know, the a call list is where it'll just dial one after the other automatically. Like if they don't answer, you leave a voicemail, it jumps to the next one. You'd have to have yeah. the dial to have that, but. Yep, exactly, yeah. You'll pull up Wyatt, start dialing his, go to the next one, Lance, and so on and so forth. Now here's, Again, a, is, yeah. here's a tricky question for you, Steve, and I, you may not know the answer to this. I certainly don't. If you use the calling bridge feature, would that technically be, I mean, it wouldn't be on mobile, but it would be your cell phone going call to call to call, I would think. I don't think that solves. Uh, so issue, you, but. you mean like for a calling list? Right. Yeah. Oh, I you don't have the option. You only have that as a yeah, one. You don't have, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You have the option okay. if you're on the actual profile. Right. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Ignore that. Just pretend, yep. pretend I didn't say that. Yeah. <laughs> but again, this, this is kind of how the yeah, stages work together with smart lists that works together with the dialer and calling all to make your life easier, right? Help you be in front of the right people at the right time, automatically kind of log and track your calls and texts. So that stuff updates automatically for you. And again, it's just, it's gonna make your life a lot easier for sure. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. That's a great rundown of that, Steve. I really appreciate um, you walking everybody through that. And uh, any, uh, any parting words for people? Yes. Um, make sure you update your stages <laughs> and make sure you log that communication. You know, there's so many that you go in and you got all these stages so nicely defined and it's like, all right, you know, we know what this means and what this means. And, you know, we're buying a ton of leads from wherever we're getting them from and they're all just sitting in lead. And then it's, Hey, my smart lists aren't working. They're not going to work unless you work them, unless you, you put people into the appropriate stages unless you're actually logging that you called Wyatt and Lance. That's how it's going to work for you. So it's really, again, I said at the very beginning, it's a little bit of muscle memory that you're building. Uh, but once you can kind of get into the habit of doing that, logging that communication, updating the stages, if it's a lead, as soon as you make contact and you have that conversation, and if it's hot or nurture, once you have something that kind of changes the relationship there, and update stages. It's, it's super, super important, right? So that's what I'll say. These lists will work as long as you do those two things, update stages, log communications.
That's perfect. All right, well, we'll wrap it with that. Steve, thank you so much, so much for being on and all for all the great info. And, yeah, thanks um, for having me. Yeah, absolutely. We'll do it again soon. Cool. All right. All right. See you soon. See you later.